So I get a lot of uh, questions, DMs, comments saying, can you show us some real quotes? Can you show us the quotes that you send out to your clients? And I read these comments, obviously, and I don't share them, of course, because, and there was a very good reason for this, I'm not legally allowed to show you what I'm charging a specific person. And even if I removed all the details from it, you could still work out who it was quite easily. Um, There's the certain line items and dates and usage where you just go, ah, that's clearly that campaign. Likewise, you wouldn't want Asda or Walmart going, hey, look, this is what so-and-so spent on their weekly shop. It's private information. And it's one of those things, it's just not an acceptable thing to do, which is why photographers don't share real life quotes. What we'll often do is fabricate a quote to show you, and that is the reason why, and often those are pretty close to what we actually did. We might change a few bits just, you know, to hide anybody's embarrassment and a bit of discretion, but generally speaking, when you see a professional photographer showing you a mock-up quote, that is pretty much what's going on. So there's a Monty Eisen video where he shows some, that that's pretty much what the quotes are going to be like. That is what we do. That is how we put the quotes together. And it's not just quotes that we don't show. We often don't show behind the scenes on commercial jobs. And there's a reason for this as well. Now, sometimes a client will want a behind the scenes shoot doing of the commercial job, and they'll be using that for their publicity. And at which point we can normally chime in and go, yes, do you know what? We'll sort that for you, but we're going to have a copy as well, which you can sign off first, which we will put out. But generally speaking, commercial clients don't want a film crew on set filming a shoot whilst you're doing it. And I certainly couldn't film it whilst I'm doing it because it's so busy, there just isn't time. Even on a test shoot, we don't always have the time. It's often just run with time lapses. If someone's got a bit of time to run around with a gimbal, brilliant. If not, mm, that's what happens. But the big commercial shoots are so full on. I only have to make sure everything looks good in camera and press a button. But that's my entire like energy and concentration taken up. And then there's a digital tech, there's my assistant, the lighting assistant, there's you know, the producer, the stylist, the home economist, all these people come in to play the set designer and set stylists, and they all have very specific jobs and none of us have time to go, could somebody just quickly get a shot of this? And we also don't want to be filmed whilst we're under pressure and under stress. It's not particularly enjoyable. I have been on a couple of jobs where there have been behind the scenes crews taken from the clients and they brought them in and filmed them. And it's not ideal, it's not great. We've always had photographers be sent into photograph shoots that we're doing, and that's particularly annoying um, because they want to get certain shots for their magazine or whatever it is, and we're just like, not now, we've got to get this done, it's time sensitive. And that is a lot of the reason. There's no real secrecy behind what we do and there's not wanting to show you secret lighting setups and tricks like that because at the end of the day, photography is a mixture of artistic decisions and physics, and both of them can easily be worked out. I should put my phone on silent when I'm doing YouTube videos. So if you're wondering why photographers don't show real life quotes, why we don't share behind the scenes, and sometimes even the actual final images, that is why. Because even with the images, sometimes by the time they're released, it can be quite a way afterwards by the time we're allowed to reshare them. And often we don't like them by this point because our work's moved on. And also a lot of the time it just doesn't represent what we do, which is why agents and art buyers always ask to see your personal work. It's also why the front page of my website is, I'm pretty sure this is the case, entirely personal work. When you go to scotchathinio.com, I'm pretty sure that first page doesn't have a single commissioned piece on it. I'll have to double check that, but it might have one or two. But generally speaking, if it does, it's because they just happen to match my vision entirely, which is always great when you get paid to do that. But generally speaking, that is just my creative vision. Anyway, I hope that clears up a few things, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.